My name is Joey Wasco. I'm a technical consultant for Cerna Solutions, and today I'm going to demonstrate the ServiceNow vulnerability response exception process. This is also known as deferment inside ServiceNow, so I'll be using deferment and exception interchangeably during this video. This video will help explain how ServiceNow handles vulnerability deferment and how it can be customized to fit your company's specific needs in this area. Vulnerability exception is an important process in an enterprise's security workflow because sometimes not all vulnerabilities should or need to be resolved, and so an exception needs to be made. For today's spotlight, I'm on the New York release of ServiceNow with vulnerability response version 10.0.3. Jumping right in, ServiceNow provides a simple out-of-box solution to vulnerability deferment, giving a security analyst or a remediation user the ability to request a deferment on either a vulnerable item or a vulnerability group. Let's go ahead and take a look at some vulnerability groups here. Let's see, we have one right here. All right, so as the user that I'm impersonating right now, I'm looking at this vulnerability group and I see that it is for, let's see here, some uninstall the reference software. So it looks like it's an uninstall. Let's take a look at the configuration items that it's referencing. Windows embedded point of sale. It looks like these are all similar and that there are currently, let's see, 12 vulnerable items under this vulnerability group. Now that I've taken a look at this, let's go ahead and assign it to Helga on the Windows Server patch team and she can go ahead and take a look at it from her side. Let's go ahead and click start investigation. And let's go ahead and impersonate Helga. Now that I've impersonated Helga, I'm going to go ahead and look at the vulnerability response assigned to me module here. And uh, let's take a look at this vulnerability group. From Helga's side, it looks like the Windows Server patch team should be taking responsibility for this CVE. And like I said previously, there are 12 vulnerable items here. We did take a look at these. So if we take a look at a, another one here, it's just a Windows embedded point of sale. In this case, I'm going to assume that these vulnerable items need to be deferred based on the information that I know as Helga. And we're going to go ahead and click on the close defer button up here. Now, this brings up a UI page. This information here needs to be filled out in order for a deferment request to be submitted. Uh, oftentimes, this is where we see a lot of customization from clients looking for either additional fields to be added here or for additional functionality to help record from the uh, deferment side uh, what needs to be captured in order for a deferment request to be submitted and then approved. Uh, for this out-of-box platform here, what we have is two simple options, deferred or closed. For deferred, if you choose that, it brings up a date field. This is also often customized to take into account schedules that need to be uh, obeyed or uh, date limitations such as no further than a year out for deferment requests. In this case, let's go ahead and defer till April 8th. Reason, we're going to say risk accepted. And we're going to fill out some fields here. Uh, decommissioning these uh, CIs. Now that these have been filled out, we're going to go ahead and click the Submit button. Before we do, take a note of the state on the vulnerability group here. Right now, it's in the under investigation state. Uh, once we hit Submit, you're going to notice that the state turns into in review. You'll also notice that all of the fields on this form here are actually grayed out. These are now in read-only state, and you can see here that it's in the review state. This is the notes that Helga put in, and that the desired state, which is going to end up up here if approved, is deferred. Now that we've submitted this deferment request, the only way that this is going to reopen is either by an approval or rejection uh, for, from the uh, vulnerability exception group, or from Helga clicking reopen on this. Let's go ahead and impersonate Vince Edel. He has been assigned approvals on these vulnerability groups in this development instance. If we take a look at his My Approvals underneath the vulnerability response application, you can see that we have a new approval request here for vulnerability group 350. Let's see here, oops. 
for vulnerability group 1086. So let's go ahead and take a look. You can see that it's requested, and this is the information that was captured in that UI page. Uh, the desired state is deferred. Desired substate, substate is risk accepted. Uh, we have the desired reason uh, that Helga put in here, and then the details from the vulnerability group. So now that we've seen all of this, we can either approve or reject it. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and click approve. Approved. Please document the work done. And approve. So this is leveraging the out-of-the-box sysapproval underscore approver table. Uh, this is what we often see for catalog items and other approval records in the ServiceNow system. Uh, this just links the uh, UI page uh, information that was surfaced on that approval record. Now that we've approved that, let's go ahead and go back to Helga. And if we click on the vulnerability response module here that we were previously in, we can see that that record is no longer visible. Reason being is that we have the state is not in awaiting implementation, deferred, closed, or in review. So if we remove that filter, we'll see that we have two groups assigned. The one that we just worked on was, I believe, this one. And we can see here that all 12 of these records are now in the deferred state. We can see under the deferral tab here that these are deferred or uh, will be deferred until April 8th. Uh, one thing to note here is that there are two out-of-box notifications that are set up. Uh, the notifications will go out seven days before this deferment expiration to the, uh, well, Vince Edel and anyone else in the vulnerability exception uh, group, notifying that this deferment is expiring soon. And also upon expiration of the deferment, when these are reopened, it will notify the vulnerability exception team as well, uh, out of box, that this deferment has expired and that this vulnerability group and these vulnerable items are now back in open state. Hopefully, however, in this case, Helga does her work and these can be closed out uh, upon uh, reopening, or you can close them here. Uh, now that we've taken a look on this side, we can go ahead and see the workflow that actually allows this to execute on the background. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my own profile here. I already have the tab open. We're going to take a look at the workflow that runs this entire process. Now, this is the baseline workflow that ServiceNow gives you. This is often customized uh, to allow for certain uh, policies or restrictions that are put in place by the uh, client that we're working with. And uh, this is very basic right now. It just simply checks to see if an approval is necessary for the state change. In this case, a deferment state change does need approval. Since it is needing approval, it's going to go, to, in this case, to the vulnerability exception team, as you can see here. If that team approves it, it's going to go up and set the approval values on the uh, vulnerability group and set it to the deferred state. If it is rejected, it's going to reopen that vulnerability group or vulnerable item and put that uh, back in the queue, essentially. And that is the ServiceNow vulnerability exception process baseline. I hope that you found this information helpful. For more information about Cerna Solutions, feel free to visit us at cernasolutions.com or contact us at the information on the screen. Thank you for watching, and we hope to connect with you soon.